Hi friends and welcome back to my channel. So today we are finally doing my bookshelf tour for this apartment uh, right in time for me to move and do another like full setup. Um, so I'm excited. For now, we're doing my bookshelf tour 2022 edition. There are six shelves just to answer a couple of questions. I organize my bookshelves generally by genre. I have the Billy bookshelves from Ikea. I don't know what other questions I might get. Uh, these are all my books. My partner um, doesn't really read, so none of these are his. Uh, some of these have been gifts. I've collected them my entire life. I think they're probably about six to seven hundred. I haven't counted. I don't know what other questions anybody might have, but you can leave them in the comments below if you do have any. Uh, I'm gonna go through them. I don't love the book by book like bookshelf type of tours, but also want to make sure that I cover everything. So we're gonna go over each shelf and do overviews. And if there's like a specific series or something that I wanna highlight or experience that I had or something, then I will talk about those books more at length. But otherwise I'm going to make this as quick as possible because my last one, my bookshelves, did not have this many books and it was still like 30 minutes long. So let's just get started. All right, so to just quickly do an overview, over here I have mostly um, contemporary and then middle grade fiction and romance. And then over here we move into literary fiction and manga with my graphic novels, some classics and poetry on this shelf. And then over here is primarily fantasy. So this is where like that shelf was hanging for quite a while uh, but since we are moving everything is off of the shelves. Also if you see boxes in the background of any of these clips that is why. So we're gonna go start shelf by shelf and work our way this way. All right so this is not the best angle but this is as high as my tripod will go so I apologize. On this top shelf here we have my shorter in like height fantasy uh, and I wanted to like kind of balance the room because this half of the room gets more light so I wanted to put the darker covers over here and the lighter covers um, like toward the other side of the room that doesn't have any windows or anything so that's why like more of my fantasy went over here. That was kind of the thought process behind the organization. But on this part, we have young adult. And then over here, it's adult because not all of my adult would fit on just one shelf. I thought I could just like highlight some that are special to me and just things like that. On this shelf, we have The Never Tilting World by Rin Chapeco. I got this one while I was in Portland visiting family at one of my favorite bookstores, which is Powell's. And then a couple of other really special ones on the shelf are The Ravens by Cass Morgan and Daniel Page. This one was sent to me by Rylan. Uh, so that one is super special and I still need to read it. And then Forest of Souls by Lori M. Lee is also equally as special because one of you guys actually sent it to me. Some other ones on the shelf that I really want to get to super soon are She Who Became the Sun by Shelley Parker Chen. I've seen so many wonderful things about this one, as well as The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. This is the Waterstones edition and I just thought it was so beautiful. This shelf was also my way of keeping a good amount of my Victoria Schwab books together. So like uh, the Monsters of Verity duet as well as the A Darker Shade of Magic series or the Shades of Magic series I guess and then obviously Addie LaRue. Moving to the shelf just below it, we have some of my taller fantasy books. So to kind of point out some books that I'm really excited about on this shelf. So on this shelf, again, it is more fantasy, uh, but these are some of the taller fantasy books and they're apparently all very tight <laughs> together. Some that I really love on this shelf and that are super special to me include Shadow of the Fox by Julie Kagawa. This is the Owl Crate edition I'm pretty sure and oh yes it is. <laughs> Stasia sent this one to me so it is signed which is cool with a bookmark as well as this print. This uh like spoiler card from 
Owl Crate. Then I have another special edition. This one is Incendiary by Zoreta Cordova. This one is beautiful and I'm pretty sure this is a fantasy about memories so I really need to get to this one soon. It sounds super intriguing and I love this bright edges and the cover on this one. I think it's so beautiful. This is the Fairy Loot. Edition. Bones of Ruin is not um, a special edition, but it is one that I'm super excited about and I haven't heard very many people speak on. Uh, this is like set in Victorian London where the world is ending and there is like a competition and the main character is a tightrope walker and can't be killed or something and she is set to be someone's champion. It all just sounds very intriguing so I need to read this one hopefully like the summer or winter. And then I have a good amount of my Grishaverse books, all of my Grishaverse books. I have the first and last book in the Diviners which is very funny to me that I don't have the middle two. I've only read book one so I'm hoping that I can read uh, at least book two this October. And then I also have um, The Gilded Wolves which my partner got for me for Christmas and I'm super excited about. I've heard nothing but amazing things about this one. It apparently has a found family trope in it which I love and it also has a heist story in it. I recently read a heist story in a mafia romance so it wasn't quite a fantasy but it did make me super excited for the fantasy heists that I do have on my shelves and now that this entire series is out I think it I think it might be time <laughs> moving down one more shelf we have my Sarah Jane Mass books this is just the dust jacket for A Court of Mist and Fury but obviously once I have the book back from the person I lent it to it's gonna go right back on the shelf and I think I need to do a reread of the series so I can fully annotate them. I think that that would be so fun. It is also a goal of mine to complete another Sarah J Mass series this year uh, because while I do have, while I do have House of Earth and Blood and House of Sky and Breath, I have not completed book one so I desperately need to do that this year. Uh, I am kind of in the mood for it. I've heard that this one is a like murder mystery fantasy which makes me so excited for it because I love a good murder mystery. And then for my Throne of Glass books, I have the Nerdy Ink cover like redesigns that I am so obsessed with and I love that she included quotes on the back. I think that is so cool. I think that this one might be my favorite in the series to be honest. Not necessarily the cover but just this book. This is the last book in the series that I have read up to so again I need to restart this series this year. I think that this might be my favorite just because it has Manon on it. I love the colors in this one, even though I don't know who is on the cover. And this edition of Kingdom of Ash is actually super special because it is signed with beautiful art inside. How could you not be obsessed with it? I do plan to get the nerdy ink um, alternate covers for the uh, A Court of Thorns and Roses series. I just haven't yet, and I also need to get... A Court of Thorns and Roses in hardcover before I do that, which sucks because it's not going to match these, but whatever, it will match this one, I guess. Also, I feel like I would be remiss if I didn't show A Court of Silver Flames just because of how much I tabbed it. It is one of my favorite books of all time. It is my favorite book in the series. I love Nesta. She is my favorite character. This book was just so well done and I cried so many times. I actually have a reading vlog dedicated for this. If you guys want to check it out, I'll have it linked below. And in case anyone is wondering where uh, I keep the dust jackets, like the original dust jackets for these, I do keep them. They're just in a box all together so that I have them just in case, like if I ever want to sell them or I get sick of these covers, which I don't know how could be possible. All right, moving down to the next shelf. This one, I primarily put my retellings on here as well as uh, a majority of my Marissa Meyer books. I think this is all of them. 
but I don't remember to be honest. I absolutely had to have Heartless facing out. This was one of my favorite books that I read in high school. I don't know that I would love it as much if I read it now, but it was one of the first books that I tabbed and also one of the first books that I wrote in. I thought that this world was just so magical and so beautiful. Marissa Meyer just did such a good job. I also just love a good villain backstory. One of my favorite movies is also Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, so I got this when I was in high school, but I I think I only read the first one and I need to go back and reread it because I remember really, really enjoying it. This is another Alice in Wonderland retelling and like I said, I love that story. So this is a book that I am highly anticipating reading super soon. I heard amazing things about Margaret Owen's first book, I think. I need to read that and own a copy because I feel like I would love it, but this... I feel like I've already heard such amazing things about, so I want to read this super soon. All right, moving down another shelf. This one is slightly harder to show just because it is behind my chair. This one, we have some more taller fantasies. I just love the way that the taller fantasies look on these shorter shelves and how full it is. I think it's so cool, but some of my favorites on this shelf. Sorcery of Thorns by Margaret Rogerson. I loved this. I remember loving Silas and this story was just amazing and I want to go back and reread it possibly physically and annotate it. I think that that would be such a fun experience and I actually do own her most recent release but I haven't read it yet so let me know in the comments below if you like it because I feel like I haven't heard very much about this one but either way I love this cover I think it's so cool and I liked both of Margaret Rogerson's previous books so I feel like I should love this one as well only book facing out on this shelf is Kingdom of the Wicked by Carrie Maniscalco this is one that I thought I would like but I wasn't anticipating loving nearly as much as I did this is also like a murder mystery thriller fantasy which was so cool and it deals with the princes of hell Again, this one has so much sentimental value to me because I read it with Rylan and we read it at the same pace. It was just honestly the best buddy reading experience of my life. So much sentimental value to me and I cannot believe I have yet to read the sequel, but that has to happen ASAP. <laughs> and I know Stasia will appreciate this, but uh, Caraval by Stephanie Garber. Again, one of my favorite series. I have not read Finale, so I have to go back and reread Caraval, but I loved the magic magic in this one. I remember reading it so quickly and I actually read Legendary in a day and I just loved the world and how whimsical and heartbreaking all of it was. I definitely did prefer Carval to Legendary just because I preferred uh, Scarlet's point of view to Donatella's but this edition is cool because it has a letter from the author as well as this beautiful art on the reverse side of the dust jacket that again I'm just so in love with. I think it's so beautiful. Then we have A Curse So Dark and Lonely. This, uh, I've read book one and two, but again, not three. That seems to be a very recurring theme for me, unfortunately. This honestly might take the cake for one of my most tabbed books of all time. Uh, this is a Beauty and the Beast retelling. I loved this book so much. I loved Harper as a main character. And again, I need to read the finale so soon because otherwise I'm gonna have to reread the entire series which would not be a problem but I have so many other books on my TBR that probably not the best uh, plan of action. Then another special edition this is the fairy loot edition of The Shadows Between Us by Trisha Levenseller. I am so happy that I got the fairy loot box for this because I think that the purple is gorgeous. I don't know when I'll read this one, but I think it would lend itself really well to like a 24-hour readathon since it is a shorter fantasy. I did start reading it as you can see, but I only got like 70 pages in and have since forgotten everything, so this would require a restart. Then the bottom most shelf on here is my Shadow Hunter shelf. Some of the books in the series are missing, uh, namely Lord of Shadows. This is another one that I got decently far in the original two series. I was reading them in chronological order, but I definitely need to go back and restart and I plan to do so this summer. Uh, I feel like these are books that I could love even though I didn't read them at the same time that they were coming out, so I don't have as much nostalgia for them, 
but when I was reading them, I really, really, really did enjoy them. Plan to go back to these and reread them soon. On here, we also have the like fake books uh, from Fairy Loot. I only have the one and it is volume three, but inside of it, inside of it, I just keep the tarot cards sent from each of the boxes. Um, I don't know what to do with these. I think that it would be fun to get the whole set and then have like a tarot card collection but i don't know maybe that is something that i will do one day but today is not that day while we're down here we may as well just go to the next shelf over so on this one we have a lot of my paperback fantasies um and like just a mix of books that i didn't really know what to do with so like the shatter me series is there those are obviously dystopian same thing with the air and Onward by Kira Cass. Project Paper Doll is a series that I loved when I was in middle school and early high school. I never completed the trilogy. Is anyone even surprised? But it was my first like alien romance series that I ever read and I thought it was so cool. This shelf also houses Finding Baba Yaga by Jane Yolen, which was a book that I had to read for class and I actually loved it. It is, like it says on the title, a novel written in verse, but I thought that it was so beautifully done and like the artwork throughout, I just thought it was so cool and definitely one of my favorite books that I read for a class. So most of the books that I read for school, I get rid of, but this one I just couldn't bring myself to do. Then also worth mentioning on this shelf, the Wayward Children series by Shauna McGuire. I have all of the books. I just can't physically hold them all in one hand. I think that these have some of the most stunning covers that I have ever seen. And again, I'm fairly certain that my taste in books is just the love of whimsy and nonsense because while some of these are sensical worlds, some of them are nonsense and those are the ones that I tend to love the most. I have also tabbed a good amount of these up quite a bit given how short they are and that most of them are under 200 pages. This is another series that I really want to do like a read-along for so let me know if you guys would be interested in that. Moving up a shelf we have my young adult sci-fi and uh, dystopian, as well as some that are not young adult, like Red Rising by Pierce Brown, which I really need to read. I'm pretty sure that Stasia actually sent me this one. And this gorgeous copy of Dune by Frank Herbert. I love this one. This one was actually a gift from my mom and sister uh, when I had come back from a trip, so it was super special to me still is obviously and i know that the hunger games is a beloved series and doesn't need any more hype but this is honestly a book that reminded me how much i loved reading and that i could read super quickly i flew through this series as a kid didn't finish the last book found it boring just everything that happened how heartbreaking it was I loved everything about it. Moving up, one more shelf. I love this shelf. It is one of my favorite shelves easily because I love the blend of all the different heights of the books. Don't get me wrong, I love when all of the heights are like together and it just looks uniform. I love that. But there's something about the like mismatch with the paperbacks and all everything being uneven that is just so appealing to me. Some books that I am super stoked to hopefully get to this year. Realm Breaker, I've included this in a few TBRs, but I still haven't gotten to it. I'm hoping that I can read it soon because by the time this video comes out, the second book is already out and I've heard amazing things about the series. Plus, I love Victoria Aveyard. Her Instagram is everything. The From Blood and Ash series by Jennifer L. Armentrout. There are so many of these books to read and I feel like that they would just be a good palette cleanser, maybe, uh, if I have just read like a really heavy fantasy because this is like a romanticy series kind of thing. And then of course, I have to buy into the TikTok hype Atlas Six by Olivia Blake. The sequel to this one also comes out super soon. And I feel like not very many people actually know the um, synopsis for this one. I know that I didn't, but it's actually about like if the Alexandrian library hadn't burnt down, but it was just hidden and there's like a secret society. How cool is that concept? And last but not least, well, actually probably not last on these shelves about TikTok books, but Zodiac Academy, I'm sure you've heard about it everywhere but from what i've heard about these books it is about a school where you get divided up uh into like dorms or whatever houses based on your zodiac sign i've heard that these are not great books but they're very fun 
So again, <laughs> super excited. Another fantasy uh, thriller that I'm excited for is The Firekeeper's Daughter by Angeline Bully. It has one of the most stunning covers I've ever seen. I got like 10 pages in one day and just put it down because I was in a big bit of a reading slump, but I'm excited to try this again this year. Going up to the next shelf, this one is predominantly like my white color like fantasy books just because I think that that's really rare when like the whole series has predominantly white covers and fantasy so I love the aesthetic of this shelf. I need to read all of the books on this shelf ASAP like I can't even just point out a couple. The Poppy War trilogy it's embarrassing that I haven't read it yet. I started it a couple years ago and loved what I was reading but put it down for some reason probably because I'm an idiot. Same thing with the An Ember in, a in the Ashes series. I got midway through book three and stop. The Cruel Prince series everyone and their mother talks about and I just like want to get the hype. I got 120 pages in around the time that Wicked King came out and same thing. Haven't read it. It's embarrassing. I don't know why I do this. And then I'm not going to take these off the shelf but the Avatar books. I really really enjoy the show Avatar so I want to read. I want to read. I want to watch the entire series and then read these books as well as all of the graphic novels that take place after because I just love that world and I think it's so cool. Obviously by this point you know the drill. We have moved a shelf up and this is my adult fantasy shelf. This whole shelf is adult fantasy and then like I mentioned earlier that shelf that I first showed you has the remainder of my shorter fantasy books on there, height-wise, not in length. Ninth House is obviously super popular, but it's one that I feel like I'm going to love. It's got that dark academia vibe, and it's weird, and something about it screams like five stars to me every time I look at it. Honestly, this whole shelf really intimidates me because the genre of adult fantasy really intimidates me, but like Ruin of Kings is a book that I've heard next to nothing about, and I feel like I would love, and I'm pretty sure the last book in the series recently came out, so I need to get on this one. The Savior's Champion is another one uh, that I think is self-published maybe, and I haven't heard very many things about, but it's like supposed to be an adult Hunger Games to vie for this woman's hand in marriage. Sounds so cool. Need to read it. I feel like I would love it. Believe it or not, I have actually read a couple of books on this shelf, and one of them that I have read and loved is The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. I've also read Galatea by Madeline Miller and loved both of them. I still need to read Circe. This is a retelling of Achilles and Patroclus, obviously. It was so heartbreaking. Uh, and I underlined quite a bit. I listened to the audiobook of this and it took me a while to get through, but once I had like restarted it the second time, I flew through it and could not stop listening. Daughter of the Moon Goddess is facing out because you cannot tell me that is not one of the most beautiful covers you've ever seen and the premise sounds so, so interesting to me. I've heard amazing things about this and the fact that it's a debut even more breathtaking as Stephanie Garber blurbed right there. Another one that I've actually read in completion is The House in the Cerulean Sea by TJ Klune. The audiobook for this is incredible, so if you can, I highly recommend consuming the story that way. This is one of the most charming stories I have ever read. It was one of my favorite books of last year, and I need to read Under the Whispering Door very soon because I feel like it's going to have the same, like, vibe and effect that this one did even though it's a completely different story. This is another shelf where I am so excited to read everything but especially the Scholomance series like are you kidding me these covers are beautiful and I started it and I loved the banter and everything I just couldn't commit to an adult fantasy so praying that when I'm in my new library and cozy this will be one of the first books that I read and hopefully I can make it through the sequel as well so I can be all caught up for when the third and I think final book in the series comes out. Like I said I want to read everything on this shelf and there are so many dragons on the shelf which is so exciting like Priory of the Orange Tree, Rage of Dragons, and then also vampires which is so cool. 
Empire of the Vampire, and then this 10th anniversary edition of The Name of the Wind. This will probably be a struggle to put back, but literally how cool is this? This is honestly what drew me in to buy the book, but it's also intimidating because it's such a huge fantasy, and the third book has not even, like, we don't even have a title, I don't think, or maybe we have a title but no release date. Either way, we don't know if we're getting it. And the one book of the month book that I have on here is Kakai. I very highly doubt that I pronounced that correctly, but apparently this is also a villain story, like a retelling. I don't, I don't know exactly, but it's stunning and I've heard amazing things about it, so I need to get to this one. Also, ASAP. So everybody just drop a comment of all the books that I've said I need to get to ASAP. And the top shelf on this bookcase, uh, we have more young adult fantasy that are taller. I'm holding up my tripod so I can't grab anything yet. So if you see a different background when I'm highlighting books, that is why. All right, I'm pretty sure this is the best that my little tripod can do, so please just bear with me. Girl, Serpent, Thorn, I have a dedicated reading vlog for, so I will link that down below, but this is the gorgeous Fairy Loot edition. I'm in love with it. Some books to highlight on this shelf, obviously Legendborn, which is facing out. I've tried to read it like three times and it's just too convoluted, so I'm hoping that I can listen to the audiobook and follow along with the actual book and like take notes so that I understand the magic system better because I think that this is a book that I could love. I just get so confused very quickly in the story. Honestly, not even that quickly. I made it through like 50% and then I have to restart it every time. Our Violent Ends, which I'm like a third of the way through and still haven't finished because as we can tell from this video, I'm incapable of finishing series. Yeah, that's this shelf. Uh, that's really all I want to highlight. We also have the Starless Sea over there because it wouldn't fit on the shelf below it and I thought it looked good with this one. So moving on to my shelves in the middle that also act as a TV stand. This is my classics and poetry shelf, which I actually really like the way that it came out. Uh, we also have a little bit of nonfiction and a couple of the other school books that I actually really loved, which are from the same class and professor. So clearly he just had good taste in books. The Sorrow Proper is one of the weirdest stories that I've ever read and 10 out of 10, you need to go read it. I would be remiss if I did not mention my sister's self-published book. You have to go check this out. It is a self-published science fiction, like dystopian, and it is very thought-provoking and beautiful. She worked so hard on it. Uh, I have a description for her channel below, but I will also link her book in case you wanna go check it out because this is just such an amazing story and I'm so proud of her. Also this cover, like that's so cool. Another self-published author that I really love is Katie Wismer. These are two of her poetry books. I loved them both. I will say I am partial to The Sweetest Kind of Poison, which is her first poetry book and I think book that she ever published actually. This is one of my favorite poetry collections ever. Five out of five stars every time. I read, I've read it like three times I think, but Poems for the End of the World is also equally beautiful and stunning. And my favorite classic on this shelf has to be Alice's Adventures in Wonderland by Lewis Carroll. I listened to this one on audiobook and it was so beautiful and fun and weird and again, didn't make any sense. In the best way possible, obviously. The last book on this shelf that I will highlight is The Perks of Being a Wallflower by Stephen Chbosky. This one took me quite a while to get through, but once I did actually make it through this book, it was so rewarding. It was such a heartbreaking story and I watched the film adaptation after and again, it broke my heart and I started sobbing, so I made my mom watch it and then she started sobbing. I think my favorite part of this book was honestly Charlie's voice throughout it. It was such a beautiful way to tell the story and the letters and the fact that it was so ambiguous that we didn't know who they were going to even by the end of the story made it all the better. Instead of going to the shelf below it, we are actually going to go to the shelf to the right for now because then we will dive into the manga and graphic novel section on my shelves so I thought that we would just get the novels of these shelves kind of out of the way in one go so it's a little bit more cohesive for you guys. This one is where I keep a lot of my cozy mysteries um, like Dial A for Aunties as well as Made by Nita Prose but I also have my very small collection 
of historical fiction. I am not the biggest historical fiction reader, but I do want to read more of it, namely The Personal Librarian by Marie Benedict and Victoria Christopher Murray. This shelf is honestly another catch-all for the books that I didn't know exactly where to put, uh, but it does have, like I said, my historical fiction as well as my cozy mysteries, but my favorite books that I am the most excited to get to on this shelf are books like My Dark Vanessa, which are um, really tough contemporary fiction reads. Another one that I have actually read and it is a favorite of mine is Bear Town by Frederick Bachman. I have a review up for this in case you want to check it out. I love everything that Frederick Bachman writes and I need to read a couple more of his books this year because I don't think I read anything by him last year, which is a terrible feeling. And one of my favorite books that I also need to reread is Ender's Game by Orson Scott Card. This was one of the best science fiction books that I've ever read and one of the books that made me realize how much I love intelligent characters in a story. Ender is one of my favorite characters that I have read literally ever and the fact that my brother recommended me this book makes it all the more special to me. All right, moving back to the left so that we can go through uh, all of my manga and graphic novels all at one time. This is one of the brightest and most colorful shelves that I have by far and I love it for that. There are so many books on this shelf that I have read as well as a good mesh of ones that I have not. Some of my favorites include Blue Flag, which lately you guys have not heard me shut up about, so I have volumes one through seven of this, and these are just some of my favorite covers, so I need to show you them all. I think that the cover for volume seven is one of my favorites right next to volume one. Waiting for Spring, I have actually completed. There is a volume 14, but that one's just short stories, so I don't know if I will read it or not, but this is like a basketball shoujo romance manga that I really like. I'm fairly certain that me saying shoujo and romance was redundant, but I'm sorry. <laughs> Another favorite series of mine is Love Me, Love Me Not by Iosaki Saka. I believe I've read all nine volumes that I own and there are three more literally at my bookstore that I still need to grab in order to complete my collection um, of the volumes that are out and like catch up. And one that has been staring at me for like a month and a half that I desperately need to read is Orange by Ichigo Takano. I've heard amazing things about this. This is the Complete Complexion Volume 1. I think I'm gonna love this. So I just need to sit down and commit to it for like an afternoon and read the whole thing and cry my eyes out. Another one on the shelf that I really want to read is What to Koi Volume 2. I wasn't sure how to feel about the first one, but I've heard that the things that made me uncomfortable were meant as jokes and they weren't serious like I thought they were. So I feel better about going into this one. I also have Little Baby Groot, which is just the cutest. <laughs> Moving down to the bottom of the shorter shelf on the left, we have my Jinji Ito collection. I really, really enjoy Jinja Ito's work. I have not read all of these, but I have read a few. Tomi is actually the first Jinja Ito that I ever read, and ironically enough, I read it during the holiday season and loved it. It holds a lot of sentimental value for that reason, but that doesn't mean it is my favorite Jinja Ito that I've ever read, although it is very creepy. I'd have to say my favorite Jinja Ito that I have ever read is Gyo, and it is all the more special to me because, again, one of you guys sent this to me. This is the same person who sent me A Forest of Souls, and it's so special. I ended up giving this five stars and reading it on a live stream, so I'll have that linked below, but definitely my favorite Jinja Ito that I've ever read. No Longer Human I have not read, and this is not a story by Jinja Ito, but the artwork is by him, and I would have to say that of all of the other books on my shelf that I have to read by Jinja Ito, this is the one that I most anticipate for when I finally do get around to it. Moving over to the bottom right shelf, this is where I keep all of my horror manga. So I have all of the Death Note volumes. Continuing on over on the right, we have the series that I have started collecting but don't have the full thing of. Tokyo Ghoul is a volume of horror manga that I read in my like trying horror manga reading vlog, which I will have linked below. I think it's 
very fitting for this shell. One that I did not have in that video though was Kakaguri Volume 1 of Compulsive Gambler and this is absolutely one of my favorite horror mangas that I have literally ever read. I think it is so cool and so smart and not talked about nearly enough. Full Metal Alchemist Volume 1 is one that I absolutely loved and was not expecting to, and I need to go back and reread it because it's been so long that I have forgotten everything, but these are the Full Metal Editions, and I think that they're so beautiful. And again, I can't wait to reread this and get back into the series because I adored it far more than I ever anticipated. Now we are on my graphic novel shelf. These are not all of my graphic novels as you will see here in a second, but over here I have all of my comics uh, and there's like a mix of fantasy and then some contemporary ones as well. There are very few contemporary ones, but I love them all the same. The fence volumes are some of my favorite and I need to continue on with the actual novels so that I know how this story progresses. Some of my favorite um, graphic novels are The Dark Matter of Mona Starr by Laura Lee Gulledge, as well as The Girl from the Sea by Molly Knox Ostertag, Witchy by Ariel Slamay Reese, and Laura Dean Keeps Breaking Up With Me by Mariko Tamaki and Rosemary Valero O'Connell, which is a more recent read and favorite, but I also read this one in October, I think, and loved it. And then and of course, Heartstopper. Everybody loves this series and I am included in that. I think it's amazing and I am anxiously awaiting Volume 5's release. Then we have my Rick Riordan shelf, which again, I apologize for the bad angle, uh, but this is as far as my tripod will go, as high as my tripod will go. I have not read nearly as much Rick Riordan as I should have at this point in my life, but the Kane Chronicles by Rick Riordan have been some of my favorites for literally ever. This is a series that I have reread two or three times fully, which very rarely happens for me with series. I hold so much nostalgia with these books, and honestly, I think it's time for another reread. <laughs> The Mark of Athena is one that I remember reading in high school and really adoring, although I never finished the series. I think I got halfway through House of Hades when I stopped, um, but I remember loving this. And also my dog's name is Athena, so of course I had to point it out. I was also super excited when I saw that Rick Riordan got his own imprint for like mythology stories. Uh, I think that that is so cool and I kind of want to collect them all, but this is the first one that I have and I'm so excited, especially because the cat is kind of the sidekick in it and I think that that's going to be so fun to read. Moving down to my next middle grade shelf, I have about three of them. This one is kind of like my most nostalgic middle grades all grouped together, minus Howl's Moving Castle. I have not read that one. It does still hold some sentimental value, which I'll talk about in a second. The Last Dragon Chronicles are books that I read when I was in elementary school, and I read them with a friend, and it was kind of like my first introduction to a book club. It was also the first book that I had ever read about dragons, and I thought that it was so, so cool. Oh my goodness, listen to them pages crinkle i love it but yeah i thought that this was such a unique world even though it was a little bit above my reading level so i didn't fully understand everything that was happening in it i still loved it and i loved chatting about it with friends and i think that that was my first intro to community with books and how fun that can be and probably an early attribution to why i joined booktube another series that i actually read during middle school and high school is the Land of Stories series by Chris Colfer. This is hands down one of my favorite middle grade series and holds the most nostalgia for me because my family would read the series together and it was one of the few times where like we would all be quiet and get along and it was just so special to me for that reason. It also reminded me that magic is very real and that not everybody has to understand that for it to be true. The series is also just excellent. I mean, look at these covers, they're stunning. But the stories themselves and how Chris Colfer masterfully 
intertwines everything and makes those connections I thought was so beautiful and 100% worth reading. They are chock full of found family dynamics as well as humor that even when you're on the verge of tears can make you belly laugh and I honestly think that is so special when an author succeeds at both in just the span of a couple of pages. The Tales of Magic series is also by Chris Colfer, but I have yet to get to it, but it is one that I am highly anticipating, and also they just have the most gorgeous covers of pretty much any middle grade series that I've ever seen. I'm pretty sure that this one is only a trilogy, but I will basically read anything that Chris Colfer writes because how much I loved his first series. This is the part where we get to the other graphic novels that I said I had. These are more of my middle grade graphic novels. One of my favorites that I didn't love and appreciate as much as I did when I got to the end is The Seance Tea Party by Ramina Yi. First of all, this art style is absolutely incredible, but again, it just reminded me of something that 12 year old me desperately needed to hear and it spoke to me in a way that not every book does. Another duology that I love is the Sheets duology. So we have Sheets and Delicates, both by Brenna Thumler. And I do have some nostalgic favorites on here, but for the most part, this one is middle grades that I really want to get to, and I just haven't had the opportunity to do that yet. One of the most nostalgic books on the shelf, arguably, and in my entire collection though, is Fable Haven by Brandon Mole. I desperately need to reread this series and I am so sad that they got rid of these original covers because these are so cool. I loved this series. I actually had a Kindle when I was younger and I got all the books on it and I would read them to and from soccer games. Given the size of the book for the age that I was, these were pretty big and I read them so fast. Another super nostalgic favorite for me is The Missing series by Margaret Peterson Haddix. I loved Margaret Peterson Haddix when I was younger. She was one of my favorite authors of all time and I read the first three books with my mom. It was the first science fiction I had ever read and my mom and I were obsessed with these books. They also have a super cool historical fiction element to them and I think if you're looking for a good mix of both these are honestly a great series for you. I also loved the Among the Hidden books, but I got those from my library, so I never owned physical copies. Now we are at kind of my present era of reading, which is my romance era, and these are my romance shelves, of course. I recently discovered, like within the past two years, how much fun romance can be, and that I actually am a really big fan. I do have some books on the shelf that are not romance just for the sake of keeping authors together. For instance, Verity by Colleen Hoover is very much not a rom- it's more like a romantic suspense and so like it kind of qualifies on this shelf but I loved this. I really really enjoy Colleen Hoover. I am a co-host stan. I recently read Reminders of Him uh, like early this year when it came out and I was sobbing by the end of it. There are so many tabs in it and I even dog-eared pages while I was writing in it. It was just such a wonderful experience. Another one that probably doesn't belong on the shelf but I didn't exactly know where to put it is The Wicker King by Kay Ankrum. I want to read more by Kay Ankrum. This was so interesting and such an easy book to fly through. The pages get darker as the book moves on and so does the book to be quite honest. It was such a unique reading experience and I still don't know how to feel about it but it makes me very much want to read more from this author. One that I'm hoping to read this year is From Lukov with Love by Mariana Zapata. I'm honestly just hoping to read more Mariana Zapata in general. Uh, I've heard so many amazing things and I really think that this is an author that I could love. I was really loving From Luke Off With Love when I was reading it. I just put it down because I had so much going on at the time. And then the last book for this shelf that I'll talk about is Love at First Bite by Carrie Arians. This was my second book that I read this year and I was anticipating to like it but not really enjoy it as much as I did. And I just feel like this book flies under the radar. I've heard nobody else talk about it and I need to because it was such a fun romantic comedy. And if that's what you're in the mood for, pick this up. It's not anything groundbreaking, but it is very, very fun. Moving down to the next shelf, we have more romance. These ones are more of my traditionally published romances, and the shelf above it was more of my, like, indie authors 
or indie published books. Obviously, Colleen Hoover is traditionally published, but she does have some indie books as well, which is why she went there. But a good amount of these books are from Berkeley, including one of my favorites, The Love Hypothesis. I know that I am not unique in liking this book, and I know that I am not the only person who has loved it, obviously. But when I tell you it is one of my favorite books and favorite romances that I've ever read, it's one of my favorite books I've ever read. I also have my Emily Henry books on here. I haven't read them yet, but I want to do a dedicated Emily Henry reading vlog and see where I fall. See if I like her new, like, I mean, I guess it's not new at this point to people anymore, but newer romances, contemporary fiction vibe. A couple books on this shelf that surprised me were It Happened One Summer by Tessa Bailey and Ice Planet Barbarians by Ruby Dixon. Obviously these are two very different books. This one is like a monster romance smut type of thing. I loved it. It was so fun and honestly had a decent plot for it being a romance. Like I feel like sometimes that falls to the wayside, but I was just as intrigued with the plot as I was with the romance in this one. It happened one summer. I knew that this was a Shits Creek retelling, so again, I anticipated liking it, but not loving it to the degree that I did, nor did I anticipate reading it as quickly as I did. It did take me a few days, but each time I sat down and really read this book, I would read like 70 pages at a time, and I was in the middle of a reading slump. I feel like I was pretty off and on with reading slumps last year, so that's not surprising to literally anyone. And then just to shout out the series one more time because I love it so much. This is Written in the Stars by Alexandria Belfler. I have read the entire trilogy. They're so fun. If you like astrology and you want like a modern day Pride and Prejudice retelling that is sapphic, pick this one up and then pick up the rest of the series because you will not regret it. Just in case you can't see the little message that I put up there, I'm not sure why this shelf is blurry, but the books that I hold up during this clip are not and it does get better after this shelf, so I apologize. Now onto my last romance shelf, which is so weird because I feel like I've read so much more romance than this, but I guess I really haven't. Uh, and obviously I haven't read every single book that I own. I'm pretty sure you guys know that at this point. This is kind of a mixture of everything, but I kind of wanted to focus on putting all of, not all of, but a good amount of my holiday romances in here. So we have This Time Next Year, which is a new year romance and then of course in holidays which is one of my favorite christina lauren books i know that this was not for everyone but i freaking adored it i thought it was so good i read it while i was setting up my christmas tree it felt like a hallmark movie and i loved it and then i would be remiss if i did not talk about jasmine guillory who is one of my favorite romance authors of all time i love that she writes such intelligent and driven women it's one of my favorite parts of her romances this one is my favorite in her wedding date series but this one is definitely a close runner up and I desperately need to get to the last book in the series ASAP. All right we are now on my final bookcase. Thank you guys for sticking it out if you've made it this long. Half of this houses my young adult contemporary books and then the other half is thrillers and then a little bit of fantasy. So we have three shelves of YA contemporary, so strap in uh, because this was a phase in high school and I don't think I've gotten over it quite yet. In the middle, I obviously have my Morgan Matson stack. My favorite of Morgan Matson's books has to be Since You've Been Gone. I absolutely loved this one and I read it in January actually one year and it just gave me the serotonin and sunshine that I needed but was not getting because I live in the northeast. Another favorite of mine that could be argued as a thriller but I just put it on the contemporary shelf is The Female of the Species by Mindy Beginnis. This is another older young adult read but I read it I think last year and loved it. I loved how brutal it was and that it shows young women that it's okay to be angry and you don't have to hide that from anybody if those are your feelings. One that I am eagerly anticipating picking up is The Chandler Legacies by Abdi Nizamian. I cannot wait to read this and also how cute is this cover? Like the whole thing, boarding school setting, found family trope, vibes from the synopsis, it just sounds like it's gonna be the quintessential read. All right, this one houses um, my very large Casey West collection. 
uh, as well as a bunch of other authors that I only have like one or two books from. I think mostly just one book from. Obviously, since I have such an expansive Casey West collection, I feel the need to highlight my favorites. These are my all-time favorite Casey West books that I have ever read. I think On the Fence takes the cake for being number one, but By Your Side has excellent anxiety representation if you're looking for that. I just thought it was so well done. Again, I read this in high school, so that's probably why I liked it a bit more. I don't know that I would feel the same way about it if I read it now. And then listen to your heart because there's something so nostalgic for me about a lake story. Even though this one didn't take place in the summer, it felt like summertime to me. It also had a podcast element and I thought that that was so delightful. One that I think is a controversial favorite is probably 99 Days by Katie Katugno. This is a problematic book, 100%, but it is also very summery in the vibes. It's a very quick read and I loved it shamelessly. I think the one that I am most excited to read on this shelf is Chasing Lucky by Jen Bennett. Again, I feel like this has such summer vibes and I've heard amazing things about Jen Bennett's writing style and just her books in general have such good reviews. The last of the young adult contemporary shelf, this one houses my Jenny Han collection. I much like very many people loved To All the Boys I've Loved Before by Jenny Han. I thought it was so good and I want to reread the series so bad. I've been wanting to reread it for like a year and a half. One of my favorites on this shelf is I'll Give You the Sun by Jandy Nelson. I cannot explain to you the nostalgia this book has for me without crying, so I just want you guys to know that I love it a lot. <laughs> Another one on this shelf that I love a lot is The Black Flamingo by Dean Atta. This is a story written in verse about, I believe, a gay male in drag and him kind of finding his identity in drag and his experience with being biracial. This obviously won an award and got so much praise and it is so well deserved. I loved this book and it is also easily just one of the most beautiful books that I've ever held in my hands. Now we move into my thrillers. The last thing he told me is one of my all-time favorite books. I read it in December of last year, I think. This is by Laura Dave. If you have not read this, Go do yourself a favor and do it literally right now. Like pause the video, come back after you've read it and thank me later. It is so good and I think about it on a weekly basis. This also houses all of my book of the month books, not all of them, but all of the thrillers that I get, which is predominantly what I get from book of the month. The one I think I am the most excited to read is The Change by Kirsten Miller. I've heard a lot of really good things about this and Kayla from Books and Lala actually gave it a four out of five stars recently and She's pretty challenging to please with thrillers, I think. So I think that this one's gonna be weird, but really good and very surprising. If y'all have been following me for a while, then you know Into the Drowning Deep is another one of my favorites. This is a science fiction horror thriller and it is everything. I loved this book and it also scared the ever living crap out of me. So if you haven't read it yet and you can take a little bit of, um, Anxiety? Read this one. This one follows some killer mermaids. This thriller surrounds the ocean and the potential mermaids that reside in it. There's also a lot more to it than that, but just like briefly to pique your interest, killer mermaids. A favorite from last year that I read is The Silent Patient by Alex Megalitis, and I really, really need to read The Maiden. This one had me on the edge of my seat. I really, really enjoyed it. And the last 100 pages I read way faster than I think I've ever read anything in my life. Now we have my YA thrillers and mysteries. I have too many of these for this shelf. Like this is a tight fit, <laughs> but as you guys know, and some of my most popular videos on my channel, if you've been here for a while, or if maybe this is the way that you found me, a Good Girl's Guide to Murder and Good Girl Bad Blood. I promise I will be reading As Good As Dead this year. There will be a vlog. You will get the review, the whole thing. It's coming, I'm just not mentally prepared. The Inheritance Games is another favorite of mine that if you guys haven't read it, you absolutely have to. It's like Knives Out in book form. And if that doesn't pique your interest, I don't know what will, but you should read it anyway. I'm not taking any more books out, but some to highlight. One of Us is Lying and Karen M. McManus in general, super excited. The Rumor Game, 
cannot wait to read and as soon as I move this is one of the first books that I'm picking up. Same situation with the Agathas an ace of spades and literally on the last shelf of this bookshelf tour I figured out how to evenly like show you this and what to prop my tripod on so that is super annoying on my part and I apologize for y'all but this is the last of my young adult fantasy books. I ran out of room on the other two bookcases so they had to go here. These are also the shorter ones in height obviously. All right, I'm in a precarious position here, so I apologize, but the book that I am currently reading is actually Six Crimson Cranes by Elizabeth Lim. I am really, really enjoying this, and I'm finally, finally reading an Elizabeth Lim book after talking about her and wanting to read her books for such a long time. Spin the Dawn by Elizabeth Lim is actually the only author signing that I've ever been to, the only personalized book that I have, and it is literally so special to me for that, and I will never get rid of this book. I also think it's beautiful, and I can't wait to read it as soon as possible. Another one that I think is going to take my breath away is Witches Steeped in Gold by Shannon Smart. I think that this cover is literally one of the most beautiful covers I have ever seen. The spine, too. Like, it's all stunning. Another one that I'm super hyped to get to hopefully very soon is Small Favors by Erin A. Craig. This one looks beautiful, but I've heard is spooky, and I can't wait to dive into this atmosphere and see kind of what that entails. And the last book that I will actually talk about is Serpent and Dove by Shelby McCurran. This I have an arc of. It was the first arc that I ever got. Did not get it from a publisher, got it from a friend who worked at a bookstore, uh, but it is so beloved. For that reason, I think it is so cool that I have this and such cool keepsake, and I actually need to read it very, very soon. Those were my 2022 bookshelf setup. I'm very happy with the way that they look, but I'm also very excited to be reorganizing them very soon and moving and setting up a library. I just think it's going to be so good and so cute. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you're doing well reading mentally and otherwise, and I really hope to see you all in my next video. Bye guys.